Minister of Health of Taiwan, welcome. Welcome uh, to all of you, dear legislators of Taiwan. Uh, welcome to Mr. Nicola Walder, National Councillor of the Swiss Parliament. Welcome to you all. Welcome to the ambassadors here present. Uh, welcome also to the media representatives. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here at the Domaine de Pente at the Geneva Press Club. I'm the Pierre Ruyuchi, I'm the director, executive director of the Geneva Press Club. It's a pleasure to have uh, this uh, event here, this press conference, important on, uh, on this Sunday. And uh, without waiting any longer, I will give the floor to the speakers here to talk about a uh, very important topic, which is the, the recovery of Taiwan after COVID-19, and also, and perhaps first, uh, how Taiwan, what Taiwan can bring to the global health issues here in Geneva and anywhere in the world. I thank you very much, and uh, now I give the floor to Dr. Lo, who is the moderator of this panel. Welcome. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those watching this press conference live stream online. My name is Dr. Luo Yijun. I'm the Deputy Director General of Taiwan CDC Ministry of Health and Welfare in Taiwan. I'm also the moderator of this press conference. In just one hour of time, the 76th World Health Assembly will officially take place, but the 23 million people of Taiwan in six consecutive years, even during and after the COVID-19 pandemic, are still not allowed to be represented in the WHA. On this stage, you will hear our honorable minister, legislators, and distinguished guests to address how Taiwan's participation in the WHO can help save lives and drive health to all. Now I'd like to invite our first speaker, honorable minister of health and welfare, Dr. Xue Ruiyuan, to give his address. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon and uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. On behalf of the uh, 20, <coughs> 23.5 million people of Taiwan, I'm in Geneva to express deep dissatisfaction with WHO Director General Tezos. Once again, due to the uh, political consideration and the pressure from the People's Republic of China. WHO has not invited Taiwan to participate in the WHA as an observer this year. China continues to misrepresent United Nations General Assembly Resolution 2758 and the WHA resolution 25.1 to block Taiwan's participation. However, these documents merely address the issues of China's repre representation in the UN and the WHO. Nowhere do they call for the exclusion of, for, uh, of Taiwan. Excluding Taiwan from WHO not only jeopardized the rights to health of the 23.5 million people of Taiwan, it also seriously undermined WHO's effort to achieve health for all. The COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated that the world must work together to overcome collective health challenges. And the Taiwan has proven to be a valuable partner in the fight against COVID-19. Taiwan will continue to work with the international community to strengthen the global health architecture. 
as, uh, so as to better prevent, prepare, uh, prepare for and uh, respond to further health emergencies. <coughs> Taiwan is also committed to achieve WHO's triple billion targets. Indeed, <coughs> Taiwan maintains an inclusive and uh, equitable universal health coverage system that, pro that provides uh, disease prevention and uh, management through robust primary health care. Roughly 99.9% .9 of Taiwan residents are covered by national health insurance, giving them access to a full range of essential high quality health care services. In 2022, Taiwan topped the number of <coughs> health care index for the first year in a row. The Taiwan model has served as a reference point for creating successful, integrated, people-centered public health system. Currently, Taiwan is not listed as a designated national focal point in the international health regulations. It is therefore impossible for other countries to notify Taiwan of IHR-related event in a timely manner. And because WHO will not certify Taiwan as a WHO-listed authority, Taiwan is not able to effectively share its pharmaceutical product or medical devices through the WHO system. Without WHO members, membership, Taiwan is also unable to provide valuable surveillance data to the global influ <coughs> influenza su surveillance and the response system, which could alert the world to the next pandemic. Taiwan is a willing and a <coughs> able partner and it should also be included in the pandemic legal accord that, under, uh, un, that is under negotiation. The health of all people is fundamental to the attainment of peace and the security. And it and is depend, dependent on the fullest cooperation of individuals and the states. This statement was inscribed in the WHO Constitution in 1948. Taiwan's participation in the WHO and the WHA is a matter of health, not a political issue. Taiwan sincerely appreciates the strong support from diplomatic allies and like-minded countries for Taiwan's participation. Taiwan will continue to work with the international community to ensure that everyone can enjoy the fundamental human right to health. In the spirit of the UN Sustainable Development goals, no one should be left behind. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Xue. Uh, now I would like to invite two members of the Parliament of Taiwan to uh, speak about this topic. Uh, first, I would like to invite Honorable Legislator and also Honorary President of Taiwan Medical Association, Dr. and Professor uh, Chou Taiyuan, to deliver his remarks. Dr. Chou, please. Thank you. Mr. Xi, Ambassador at Large Wu, Honorable Nicholas Water, members of Swiss National Council, and uh, members of Taiwan's parliament, members of media, Good friends from around the world, ladies and gentlemen, 
Good afternoon. On behalf of the Social and the Welfare and the Environment Hygiene Committee of our Parliament, and also the 21 NGO National Associations of Medical Professionals, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming and appear to your further support for Taiwan meaningful participation in the mechanisms, meetings, and the activities of the World Health Organization. As the chairman of the committee, I can assure to you that Taiwan has been a valuable partner in the fight against the COVID-19, working with the international partners. Taiwan has demonstrated its commitment to share its expertise, experience, and the successful pandemic response measures with many countries through bilateral channels. Unfortunately, due to political considerations, which are irrelevant to health care, Taiwan continues to be excluded from WHO and the WHA since 2017. By not inviting Taiwan, it not only tremendous jeopardized the health right to 23 million people of Taiwan, but also undermined WHO objective of securing an, an inclusive global public health cooperation system, which the world demands. As we learned from the COVID-19 lesson, infectious diseases do not respect borders. It is critical and important that the international commu community works together and coordinates action if we are to respond to huge global health challenges and to build up a decisions global health network. Inviting Taiwan as an observer at uh, the WHA would be a crucial step to achieve the goal, and by doing so, it would also strengthen the WHO commitment to an inclusive approach to the international health cooperation, which is in line with the years seen saving lives and the driving health for all. Once again, I appeal to all our friends here today to support Taiwan's meaningful participation in the international platforms. Taiwan's exemplary capabilities and innovative approaches will bring considerable value to the WHO. Together with the international community, Taiwan can and will continue to contribute more in the post-pandemic era and help to safeguard the global health security. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Legislator Cho. Next, I would like to invite uh, Honorable Legislator and also the President of Taiwan Nurse Association, Dr. and Professor Chen Jingming, to deliver her remarks. Thank you. Distinguished guests, member of the media, good friends from around the world, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. As a member of the Parliament of Taiwan, it's my honor to be here at the International Press Conference. I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all our good friends of Taiwan for your long-lasting and staunch support for our WHA campaign. Legislation Yen, as the parliament of Taiwan, is made up of the people who are elected by popular votes. We come here to serve as a representative of our people, to speak out for 23.5 million Taiwanese. And this is the collective voice of Taiwanese people. Taiwan, a force for good, is working with the world to combat global challenges. We are willing to engage with Global Health Security Network and make contributions with all partners to strengthen the global health architectures. 
over the past decade, Taiwan has boosted its health care and public health system in line with WHO's recommendations. Taiwan's national health insurance, envied by many countries in the world, is a prime example of universal health coverage, offering financial protection and access to a wide range of essential services. Taiwan is upgrading its medical system, introducing new medical care models and utilizing telehealth consultations for patients residing in remote areas and outlying islands. Taiwan has made significant advance in and contributing to universal health coverage and is committed to share its experience and expertise with the world. Tomorrow is the first day of 76 World Health Assembly, where all representatives and government officials will gather together to discuss solutions on how to promote the health of people around the globe and how to live healthier. Over the past 75 years, veterans effort has been made through international collaborations in many areas, including from the elimination of smallpox to the invention of malaria vaccine. Taiwan has been demonstrating our perseverance, innovation, and collaboration, bringing the commitment to our unified goal. So it is crucial that we coordinate global health ever, and it is even crucial for it to involve all such as Taiwan. We have demonstrated ourselves as an extended model and has been willing to make a significant contribution to global public health. Taiwan should be invited to all WHO meetings, mechanisms, and activities. This is the only way to achieve the ultimate goal for health for all. I thank you for your support. Thank you, Honorable Legislator Chen. Next, I would like to invite a member of the Swiss Parliament National Councillor and also co-chair of Switzerland-Taiwan Parliamentary Friendship Group, Mr. Nicholas Weider, to give his remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister, honorable guests and colleagues from the UN Legislative, the member of the press and public, dear friends. It's a pleasure again to be here to give you a few words. I will try to be short, but I have a few words to say. Um, to say that the Swiss Parliament, and we are many people in the Swiss Parliament, supporting Taiwanese population and the right to Taiwanese population uh, to live in democracy, to live in peace, and to participate to the world affairs. And today, it's for me also um, not a shock, but it is an not a justice, and it is uh, not an unfair, well, that was the word I was looking for. It is completely unfair that 23.5 million people do not have the right to participate in the world affair concerning health. And I will really uh, show you today my complete solidarity with your fight to be included in the world. Taiwan is today Switzerland's fifth largest economical partner in Asia and shares many values with us, uh, including commitment to democracy and commitment to human rights. Taiwan, which is open to the world and attached to freedom, holds a special place for our Swiss parliament, which has repeatedly expressed demands to in, uh, uh, intensified relations between our two countries. A few days ago, I said it yesterday, but I want to repeat it. A majority of the National Council, the People's Chamber of our Parliament, in a historical move, officially instructed our Bureau to strengthen ties with our counterpart in the legislative Yuan. This decision also follows a recent trip we made with several parliamentarians in February in your beautiful country. This trip for us was an opportunity to assess the areas of deepening our relations between our two countries. Also the occasion to reiterate our position that the final status of Taiwan be decided peacefully by the parties concerned and first and foremost by the Taiwanese population. But ladies and gentlemen, as I said it yesterday already, I'm a member of the parliament, but I'm also a, Geneva, a citizen of Geneva, a city that also promotes multilateralism, 
inclusiveness and the right for all to participate in the work and discussions of the international community. This is why, having grown up in this city surrounded by so many symbols, I cannot accept that 23.5 million people are excluded from multilateral work on issues as important as climate, security or health. And these for reasons that have nothing to do with public good. Taiwan is currently excluded for most of the work of the World Health Organization, despite its exceptional commitment to fulfill its duties, despite the great expertise, it has been said, and the unfailing engagement to public health Taiwan has demonstrated, despite also its exemplary management during the COVID-19 pandemic that has enabled Taiwan to have a much better record than many countries, but also helped other countries to better understand and better fight this pandemic. The, finally, Taiwan is also excluded, despite the full and exemplary collaboration with the WHO and member states during the health crisis on, and on other public health issues a transparent cooperation that could be an inspiration for other countries that are maybe full members but still struggle to meet with their obligations. That is why I consider, ladies and gentlemen, that Taiwan's full participation in the work of the WHO and its inclusion in the World Health Assembly as an observer to be a request that should be fully supported. Not only would it be justice for the 23.5 million people of Taiwan, but it is also in the direct interest of the international community and our ability to achieve the health-related sustainable development goals. That's why the Swiss Parliament will therefore continue asking our government and other states to support greater integration and participation of Taiwan in the work of the World Health Organization as well as in other international fora, such as the UN Climate Change Conferences. Thank you very much. Very much, Honorable um, Member of Parliament, uh, Nicholas Weider. Next, I would like to invite a representative of so three non-governmental organizations to give their points of view in terms of this topic. First, I would like to invite CEO of Foundation of Medical Professional Alliance in Taiwan, Dr. Lin Shijia, uh, to deliver her remarks. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Shijia Lin, and I'm the executive director of Foundation of Medical Professional Alliance in Taiwan. Um, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you for your interest in Taiwan's issues and uh, for being present here today. Um, uh, our foundation, the FMPAT, has been devoted uh, to promoting Taiwan's participation in the WHO uh, for over a quarter of a century. So, so long time. Um, and this year, we have uh, witnessed nearly 500 Taiwanese people coming from different parts of the world to show their support. This is the largest number um, of participation since the first Taiwan for WHO campaign in 1997. Uh, over the past few years, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the people of Taiwan um, has uh, uh, accumulated a wealth of emotions. These emotions uh, have translated uh, into various forms of uh, uh, creativity and uh, energy, which are now rising here in Geneva. Um, the world has witnessed Taiwan's remarkable achievement in combating COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Since the SARS outbreak, Taiwan has been striving to um, combat the pandemic on our own. On our own. Um, the global community should not want uh, and hope that Taiwan can also handle it on its own next time. Once one is SARS and this time is COVID-19. And such a global health gap will pose a threat to people um, worldwide worldwide, not only in Taiwan. Uh, through the COVID-19 pandemic, the, the world has come to realize that no one is safe until everyone is safe. No one is safe until everyone is safe. 
Um, in, in the wake of the community impact, WHO member uh, states uh, agree on the need to establish a new pandemic uh, treaty, a pandemic treaty. Um, the WHO, we call it the WHO CA Plus. WHO CA Plus. Um, to, uh, to address further uh, challenges. However, according to the zero draft of uh, WHO CA Plus, Taiwan is excluded from the CA Plus and uh, may not have the opportunity to participate in related mechanism. Totally excluded. And uh, this mechanism has designed to uh, avoid uh, repeating the mistake made during the COVID-19 period. Again, repeat. Um, when specific countries need essential uh, supplies and machines as bargaining chips, if Taiwan is included from this mechanism, it will not only pose a threat to the health and the well-being of the Taiwanese people, but also pose challenges to global supply chain, but also but also pose challenges to global supply chain and uh, the sharing of virus information. It will be very terrible, not just only Taiwan suffer, but all of the world suffer. Therefore, I urge everyone to uh, extend it, their concern beyond Taiwan's participation in the WHO and its attendance at the WHA, but also but also include Taiwan's opportunities to engage in the mechanism of the WHO CA Plus. The WHO CA Plus is a, a, a new convention uh, about uh, the pandemic treat. Um, okay, it's the most established global uh, health think tank in Taiwan, our foundation, uh, is committed to collaboration with government with government and the expert organization to uh, facilitate uh, pertinent discussions and uh, avoid case. Um, let us work together. Uh, let Taiwan participate in the WHA with its name, Taiwan. Um, let Taiwan become a member of WHO. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite youth representative of the Taiwan United Nations Alliance, Yang Xinzi, to deliver her remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Xinzi Yang, the youth representative of the Taiwan United Nations Alliance and the leader of the international action team of Here I Stand Project. Today, our entire campaign team, including several renowned doctors, a city, a city council member, and several young talents has come from Taiwan to be present here. It is my honor to speak on behalf of my team. I believe that distinguished guests before me have already expressed how Taiwan is willing to contribute to the world, and also why, why the world should include Taiwan. I will now express our concerns on this matter as a civil organization. Taiwan United Nations Alliance has been campaigning for Taiwan's meaningful participation in WHO and the UN for 20 years. We do not only ask for meaningful participation in global community, but also with the right of, rightful name of Taiwan. We would like to make Taiwan a normal state, both in name and in fact, to be engaging in the world community. Taiwan United Nations Alliance was founded in 2003, which happened to be the year when the SARS epidemic broke out and when the world did not include us in the pandemic reporting system. Since that moment, the people of Taiwan have deeply felt the vulnerabilities within the global health system. Since then, Taiwan United Nations Alliance has been tirelessly working every year to tell the world about Taiwan's importance. Now, after 20 years, with the outbreak of COVID-19, or what we call Wuhan pneumonia, killing so many people, it shows that the world never learns the lesson. Because Taiwan is a country who first reacting to COVID-19 and who first telling its seriousness to WHO, who did not listen to us. 
We hereby call on the international community to pay attention to the role of Taiwan in the, in the international health security and to substantially recognize our rightful name of Taiwan. Please truly practice your value of health for all by including Taiwan in the global health system. Stand with Taiwan, stand for justice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Xingzi. Next, I would like to invite the North American Taiwanese Medical Association, also advisor of Executive Yuan, Dr. Lin Rongsong, to deliver his remarks. Thank you, Chairman, media friends, ladies and gentlemen. I live in California, Los Angeles. Maybe I'm the only uh, the people not living in Taiwan right now. And I'm a practicing anesthesiologist. And uh, I'm enjoying this campaign, Taiwan Beat for WHO since 1997 with Professor Lee. It has been so long. And uh, in this 20 something years experience, I'd like to share my feeling. Number one, I see some bright side, and I also see the dark side. The bright side is through the effort of Taiwanese people, Taiwan government, and US government. We've been working very hard through the medical association and also through FAPA. We have to give a lot of credit to US FAPA. Now, in the, in the United States, not only parliament, they passed the resolution, it's not over half, it's not over two thirds, it's uni unanimously passed the, the resolution to support Taiwan to join WHO. Three, 500 something plus vote to zero, total favor to Taiwan. Not only that, U.S. government is also passed several bills. You are talking about law. U.S. already passed the law to support Taiwan to join the WHO. That, that's the bright side. Because I've seen all the democratic country right now. Nobody is so shy now, no shy now. All the democratic countries stand up and support Taiwan for this cause. That's the bright side. And today, from the United States, we have overseas Taiwanese, about 60 people, come to here to stand with you, campaign with you, rally with you. Today, we see the Secretary General is also in the crowd. We have no fear. We shouting on him because, of course, he's smiling, but I think his heart is bleeding because he know this is not fair. This is not fair because Taiwan, 20 million people, has no any spot in this so-called health organization. So I just mean I see some bright side, and I also see some dark side. The dark side is China treat this issue, health issue, as a political issue. They bring the representative from UN, the politician come to sit at chair of WHO and against Taiwan. They are against Taiwan even more aggressively. That's the dark side. But we have no choice. We have no choice to work even harder, find our friend, and get together. But today, I'm going to bring three directions to share with you. I hope we can achieve this goal. Number one, all the Taiwanese has to know what UN 1971 resolution, what it means. This is very important. Because US Foreign Affairs Committee just passed the resolution. Say, they say, 
2758 resolution had nothing to do with Taiwanese 23 million people. Not many people know what 2758 means. 2758 resolution only resolved two issues. Number one, re-establish the chair for PRC, number one, so they can go back to, 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 to WHOC. Number two is expel. They, they expel the representative of Chiang Kai-she leaving this WHO organization. Had nothing mentioned about Taiwanese, Taiwan, Taiwanese, uh, Republic of China. No. Only the representative of Chiang Kai-she was kicked out from this assembly. Had nothing to do with 23 million people. So we have to really let all the people know China always say based on resolution 2758A, Taiwan has no space in this organization, but it's not true. So we have to get together with all the friends, challenge, challenge this resolution more aggressively. Number one. Number two, you know, tomorrow we have a two and two debate, right? By our custom, because they don't want Taiwan issue to spend too much time in the General Assembly. So they just say, oh, Taiwan, you have two, 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 two nations speak for you, and another two countries speak for the other side, for China. I hope one day and soon, U.S. representative is going to stand up and speak for Taiwan at that General Assembly. It never happened before, but I hope U.S. one day we can campaign, lobby for that to see the U.S. can stand up at that General Assembly, not afterward. Number three, this is even more important. We have to prepare for the future. We have to elect a Secretary General more favorable to democratic country, not China's friend. You know what I mean? Even right now, if we put Taiwan issue in the vote, we still cannot pass. Even with that pass, we cannot get, because so many people, general secretary, so much power in this organization. So we have to prepare for that. I hope all the democratic countries start working on it. Prepare a next secretary general is more favorable to Taiwan and UN and all the democratic countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lin. Last but not the least, I would like to invite a CEO of European Federation of Taiwan Health Alliance, Dr. Victor Wang, to deliver his remarks. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your invitation. And I would like to point out three points, only three minutes, hopefully. Um, first, exclusion of Taiwan. This issue has been an uh, issue showing that WHO itself cannot run itself without the influence from Beijing. And the par paradoxical situation had May himself that ridiculously showing one way is promoting the health for all global coverage and the other way excluding Taiwan outside of this community. This is a big issue that to be resolved. And um, as a, our organization has been coming back 23 years, uh, 2021, 20, and uh, coming back every year to make our voice loud to the point to make the world knowing that we are one of the members from the world, but unfortunately we still coming coming back. But this makes me uh, feel sorry to say that this is a um, ridiculous situation for WHO. It's like a slap on the face of WHO every year, but that is true. Second point, um, the tie is changed. Everybody, you know, the recent years from major media all over the world that's showing that European countries, especially Germany, Belgium, UK, France, uh, Baltic three countries, they bring up 
not only the uh, UN Parliament members are voting favorably to help Taiwan join the community internationally, but also their interna internal Congress overwhelmingly voting in uh, favor of building a political uh, relationship with Taiwan and support Taiwan to join the international organization. Time has changed and time has changed. Another sh uh, short story that I have to tell you that uh, four years ago when I'm wearing this shirt on the street of G Geneva, we were forced by police to strip off our shirt. Our member were take off our shirt and the shirt was confiscated by the police. Of course, internally, the uh, Switzerland Geneva um, community has generated some issue about ethical problems for policemen. And, uh, but last year, we do it again. This year, too, there's nothing happened, nothing. So I'm telling you, the tie is changed, yeah? The third point I wanna say is that join us to say yes to Taiwan. We were, um, from ever since that our organization, uh, organization sent a lobby letter to Minister of Health from European region, actually from uh, 28 country only, but since three years we expanded to Health of uh, Ministry of Health and the uh, Parliament member, Parliament head, and over 100 uh, recipient in countries, 52 countries, including Vendicon. Uh, this year, last year, actually this year, we raised the bar higher even. We invite European country through individual city member that uh, join us to host um, online health share events globally, Taiwan, European country, and East Coast of USA, that over 30 country and uh, city committed to this event, that we have over nearly, nearly 10,000 participants from Taiwan and European country together and over a dozen of uh, political uh, parliament leaders and community leaders joined us. Uh, Legislator Chen was one of the joint uh, members that show our you know, ex uh, uh, exercise health lifestyle, uh, their version of lifestyle on the health days. So please join us in the future. Say yes to Taiwan. Say our name. Say our name. Yes to Taiwan to join WHO. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang. After hearing those strong statements, now the floor is open to the press in, uh, in the venue and also online. Um, let's just give some housekeeping message first. Um, if you want to ask a question, uh, Jolas, please raise your hand and we'll deliver the microphone to you. And the minister will answer the question in Mandarin Chinese, and our translator, uh, please come to the podium, and you will, uh, the translator will translate that into English and reply to you. And also, before asking questions, journalists, please state your name and the media you are representing. Now I would like to see if any journalists would like to, okay, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Peter Kenny. I work for the Anadolu Agency. I would like to ask the minister, one, uh, one of the speakers said that China is stronger on the issue of health than other issues. Can you explain your perception of why that is? And can you also uh, speak to the last peak's points that the tide is turning. Could you say something about that too? Thank you. Uh, I want to ask the question of the question of that 
Thank you for your question. The first question is about why China is so tough on the health issue against Taiwan. I think it, uh, China is not only uh, tough toward uh, uh, Taiwan on this issue, but on all domains. Uh, for example, for example, China launched the military drills surrounding Taiwan waters, and we believe that health issues or medicine issues are issues related with global health and uh, lives, saving lives, and should not be related with uh, political stances. Uh, and the second question, yes, the tide, uh, the tide is changing. It seems that more and more countries and international friends support Taiwan's participation in WHA and WHO. And of course, this is because Taiwan's soft power of health and medicine is greatly recognized by the international community. And and over the years, we can see that Taiwan has become a centerpiece of an increasing uh, close network with more supporting members. So, if you have a chance to get a chance to get a chance to get a chance to get a so if Taiwan becomes the uh, gap of uh, global infectious disease epidemic, I'm afraid that it will spread very quickly to other corners of the world. So I think that the whole world has been so I believe that the global health workers understand it very well about this point. So that's why they strongly support Taiwan to become a member of this global anti-pandemic team. So Taiwan's so Taiwan's issue uh, is a health issue, not a political issue. Okay, uh, is there any other question from the floor? Can I ask in English or Chinese? Chang 即便在我們的防疫成就被全世界看到以及我們在國際上的聲量也越來越高那您是否擔心台灣社會會出現對WHA的fatigue疲勞以及你是否看到越來越多的機會就這些機會在哪裡怎麼樣能夠表現在會員
Thank you. The question from Central News Agency will first be translated into English. Uh, two questions for Minister Shea. Uh, the first one is uh, in on the morning today, on today's morning, when we have the talk and uh, walk and talk, WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus uh, mentioned about Taiwan's participation in WHO. Oh, the key issue that requires Taiwan as a member state. What's your uh, view on that? And second question is, it's been seven years. Taiwan has not been able to become an observer of the WHA. So even though uh, Taiwan has a tremendous anti-pandemic achievements, even Taiwan has outstanding uh, medical and health uh, performance or achievements over the years, are you concerned or uh, do you find any opportunities uh, about Taiwan's participation in WHA or uh, are there more opportunities for uh, we need more support from our allies to support Taiwan. Oh,第一个问题是早上那谭德赛所说的，但是事实上，在两千零九年到二零一六中间，我们也获邀来呃这个作为这个WHA的observer。Actually, from 2009 to 2016, Taiwan has been invited to be an uh, observer of WHA. It was uh, at the invitation of WHO Director General at that time without uh, experiencing or going through the voting process of the WHO members. So I think that the President was talking about this thing, there was a little difference in the reality of the situation. So I think when uh, Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus uh, mentioned about this issue, it is not uh, quite the fact or the truth. The second question, 是不是像一年复一年的我们这样子的一个争取会造成所谓的疲乏的现象我想这是我们的所需要面对的现实我们只有不断的争取不屈不挠的努力才有可能会有结果如果我们停止的话那大概就没有可能 as for the, whether or not there will be any fatigue in our uh, campaign for becoming a uh, WHA observer, I think this is the reality that we all need to face. We need to continue uh, making efforts without ceasing. We should not give up. We should not. Uh, uh, we should continue to uh, redouble our efforts to uh, win this opportunity. 那我们在跟世界上所有这些国家交往的时候，那在卫生医疗领领域，我们不会只有谈要这些国家来支持台湾加入WHO。when we are engaged with other countries or international friends uh, uh, on the issues with um, health and medicine, we will not just ask these friends to support us to participate in WHA or WHO. We are talking about this issue, this 包括我们可能提供给某些国家的这种在医卫方面的协助以及我们怎么样跟其他的国家在这个医卫方面的资讯的一些交换其实有很多方向都可以一起来谈的所以我想这个事情不会说到后来会变成一个 fatigue 
when we are engaged with other countries discussing about the medical and health cooperation, we also talk about assistance and the exchange of information and other domains for future cooperation. So I don't see there is any possibility for the so-called fatigue in the future. When we these countries when we talk about cooperation and mutual assistance with these friendly countries, then for sure we will receive more and more support in terms of our participation in WHA as well as WHO. 簡單來講, 加入WHO這樣子的一個訴求,並不是要求世界各國來聯名我們,同情我們,我們是在所建立的基礎是在互相之間的合作,互相之間的利益。I think winning the support of our international friends to support us is not at uh, the mercy of us, of them, uh, on us, but based on the foundation of mutual uh, cooperation, mutual assistance, and reciprocity. Okay, uh, I will now take two questions from journalists watching online. The first question is from Emma Farge of the Reuters. Uh, and the question is directed to Minister Xue. Minister, do you have any grounds to believe this year you will finally obtain access to the WHA and why? Uh,这个问题是要请教来自路透社要请教呃薛部长，您认为今年呃可以加入WHA吗？为什么呢？至少到目前为止，我们并没有收到这个邀请函。as of today, we haven't received invitation yet. But of course, we will never give up uh, until the last moment. Thank you. The second question comes from Nina Larson from the AFP. Minister, I have a question. Could you say in whether you think the COVID pandemic was made worse by the exclusion of Taiwan from the global health community and in what way? And what, does you, uh, what do you see as the biggest threat from its continued exclusion in the post-pandemic era? 疫情越来越糟的一个原因呢对于像COVID-19这一次的疫情 I think the first question is uh, excluding Taiwan from a global health system uh, has any impact to the global uh, pandemic outbreak? 事实上这一个 是一个 假设的问题了，哈，也就是说要去对照哈，这个如果台湾没有被排除的话，会有什么样的好的结果吗？So uh, I think this is a hypothetical question. We need to uh, compare whether or not uh, be, uh, whether or not Taiwan is excluded from this uh, global health system. 我不敢说这一定会有一个好的结果出来，但是有一点。台湾因为长久以来，那从中国那边得到了相关的这这种啊卫生的议题，啊，事实上是资讯是很少的。
Uh, I'm not really sure about that, but uh, one thing I am sure is that Taiwan receives very little information about health issues directly from China. And so does the entire world. Uh, because Taiwan and China are very close with each other in terms of geographic uh, location. So Taiwan has always followed very closely on China's situation. 所以說以這一次COVID-19的疫情來看的話,事實上2019年底的時候,台灣就發現在中國有似乎可疑的一些肺炎的個案在散布當中。so taking COVID-19 pandemic uh, as an example, at the end of 2019, Taiwan found that there were suspected cases related with pneumonia um, in China. Uh, 2020年初在1月的時候,台灣就要求能夠有專家到中國那邊,中國的武漢去實地上的這一個了解。so in January 2020, Taiwan requested to conduct a field investigation in China. When we went to and came back, the expert told us that this is a serious human trafficking. So when we are experts came back from China, they made the conclusion that there was the possibility for people-to-people -people infection cases existing. So in Taiwan, in Taiwan, in Taiwan, in Taiwan, so at that time in Taiwan, we already categorized that as a legal infectious disease in Taiwan at the end of January. Uh, <coughs> if Taiwan were WHO member at that time, we could quickly pass this information to WHO members. 而且可以加上一個warning,因為台灣跟中國都是屬於華人的社會,很快就會到達農曆的春節,這個時候會有很多人口的移動。And plus we could provide warning to other parts of the world because uh, both Taiwan and China belong to the Chinese speaking community and at that time the Lunar New Year was approaching so it would involve a lot of uh, people movement going back to their hometown. And these people not only go back to their hometown for the New Year, they might they they also uh, travel abroad for vacation. So so that's why uh, soon after the New Year, uh, there was uh, an outbreak in Europe uh, spreading from China. So if Taiwan is a WHO member, I can't guarantee that it won't happen. But it's better to have a chance to prevent such things from happening. So I could not guarantee that this would not happen if Taiwan were the WHO member, but I could guarantee that there was a less opportunity to have this kind of um, outbreak. Uh, 
。那这样子的呃，如果台湾继续在排除在卫生啊，就全球卫生体系之外，那会有什么样可能的议题？这一次 COVID-19 的疫情，是因为台湾这边有充分的警觉性，所以至少我们。哦，在第一时间之内，那能够采取防范的措施。And uh, facing this uh, COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, Taiwan was uh, fully aware and high alert about the possibility of pandemic. 下一次，台湾是否仍然有这么幸运，这就不知道了。I'm not sure whether or not Taiwan will be like this, uh, like um, uh, will be so fortunate. I'm not sure. From SARS and COVID-19 the situation, we can also know that in China, that in many conditions, it is very easy to spread this new COVID-19 virus. From our experiences of SARS and uh, COVID-19, we find that it's quite easy uh, in China to have a new um, emerging infectious diseases. Taiwan can I can say that Taiwan stays, uh, stands on the front line in fighting against uh, these newly emerging infectious diseases. If we have a global network, it can help Taiwan to provide information to the global network. If the epidemic comes out, maybe Taiwan will become a port. If um, there is no global health network to provide information to Taiwan and vice versa, uh, I'm afraid that Taiwan will become the gap of the next uh, newly uh, uh, of next uh, pandemic outbreak. Taiwan if Taiwan becomes a gap, that would be a terrible uh, impact to the entire world since Taiwan has so uh, close connection with uh, the entire world. So I think Taiwan has a very strong reason to be included in WHO. So I believe that Taiwan has uh, four reasons uh, to be included in WHO system. Thank you. And just uh, some minor uh, addition and correction to the answer translated in the first question. Uh, the field trip of our two experts uh, to Wuhan, China took place uh, in January 13th to 14th. And we officially categorize uh, COVID-19 as the category five, which is the highest level uh, communicable disease nationally on January 15th, right after their return. Any other question from the floor? Uh, viewing the time constraint, um, some of the domestic uh, media's question, I think we'll probably process them later, okay? Because the, uh, all right, any, Question from the international fish community? No? Okay. So uh, thank you very much, uh, all the distinguished guests and press community. I'd like to uh, invite the chairperson to uh, deliver some closing remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, all of you, to, to have assisted to this press conference. Thank you. Minister of Health and uh, legislators, thank you to Mr. Walder to, uh, to have been here and to express uh, their views about the participation of, the, of Taiwan to the World Health Assembly this year. And uh, as we saw, uh, there is a, a strong support by the Swiss Parliament for this. And, um, and uh, I'll let the word to you later on to express the support for that and re-insist about the participation of Taiwan. So it's always a pleasure to, to receive uh, some um, governmental uh, representatives here in Geneva at the Press Club and uh, you are always welcome and we're just going to close this uh, press conference with a 
coffee uh, you're sure all invited today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.